Before this video begins, I want to give a quick shout out to my friend Ali from MAG uh, for the new channel graphics. If you guys want to check out more of his work or need a logo for yourself, check him out. Links in the description below. Yo, what's up guys? It's Suraj from Tech Devoted and if you follow me on Twitter, you guys might have seen my recent not so positive tweets about the OnePlus 6. The tweet kind of provoked a discussion, a lot of people reacted, many of them were defending the OnePlus 6, so I thought, hmm, maybe I should try the phone out before forming any kind of opinion. So that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. I got myself the OnePlus 6, well it's not exactly mine, but I'm going to be trying it out for the course of the next 5, 6, 7 days and letting you guys know my opinion and more importantly, compare it to my Redmi Note 5 Pro as that is what I'm upgrading from. This is my point of reference. I really want to see what the extra amount gets you. So this is what I'll be referring to throughout the video and I'll be making comparisons to the uh, to the Redmi Note 5, Note 5 Pro within this video itself. Uh, so yeah. That's my point of reference, but taking a look at this phone, it actually looks pretty damn good. It's beautiful. I'll, I'll give OnePlus that. This is the mirror black variant in 64 GB, the base variant. Uh, it, it looks good. Honestly, it does. Uh, but the first thing I'm going to do and the first thing that any OnePlus 6 users should do is apply that case because obviously this is a glass back. I don't want any fingerprints or scratches, especially not when it's not my device. Uh, I'm going to take out the plastic and in we go. And that's it. So I'm going to try out the OnePlus 6 for the next five, six, seven days and I'll keep you guys updated as to what I think about it. Okay guys, I have been using the OnePlus 6 for a few hours now. When I first took it out of the box, it was at 45% battery and after that I did go ahead and transfer all the files and stuff from my Note 5 Pro to this. I also clicked some pictures here and there, did some casual social media and after all that the battery has dropped to about 10%. I guess that's pretty decent but too early to judge obviously. As for my first impressions, they still remain the same. This phone is absolutely gorgeous. It makes my Note 5 Pro look like a 2012 phone, even though the bezels on that as well are not all that huge. But I guess uh, the bezels on that stand out a little more to me uh, since they are white. And on this phone, even though the bezel is not that huge, it's black, so that kind of helps. But anyway, uh, the fingerprint sensor on this phone feels a little different to touch than any sensor I've used in the past. And sometimes I end up touching the camera module instead of the sensor itself because they're both kind of similar to feel and touch, maybe it's just me, I don't know. Uh, but in terms of performance, I have seen uh, slight differences. I, I find the OnePlus 6 to be slightly faster, duh, obviously. Uh, but I guess it's not too big of a difference, uh, but we will do a sort of impromptu quote-unquote speed test uh, to see how big the difference actually is. That's coming up later in the video. And uh, this is also my uh, first, first notch phone, by the way, so yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it just yet, but I think I'm going to be able to adapt. It is day two of me using the phone. Last night, I put the phone to charge at about 10% and it went from that to 54% in about 20 minutes. Uh, super amazing shit. Dash charge at play. Uh, but right now, I just got up. It is 7 in the morning and the battery is at 48%. So really good standby time there. My Note 5 Pro in comparison might have done just a tiny bit better, but this isn't bad at all. So I've been almost continuously using the phone since then, uh, just watching some YouTube videos and doing casual tests against my uh, Note 5 Pro. So the battery is again down to about 10%, so I'm gonna plug it in, let dash charge do its thing. And uh, as for some other observations I made today, I'm not a huge fan of the placement of the volume rockers. Uh, typically I'm used to them being on the right on this phone. They are on the left, which is still okay, but they're placed extremely low. So oftentimes I end up pressing the volume up button when I wanna do the exact opposite gonna take me a while to get used to that and I did also go ahead and do a 
real world uh, speed test of sorts uh, against my Note 5 Pro only using the apps that I typically use on the daily basis and you won't believe it the Note 5 Pro is only 10 to 15 of 20 percent slower than the OnePlus 6 like in terms of pure performance in terms of speed uh, and in fact the Note 5 Pro actually did a better job than the OnePlus 6 at RAM management I don't know what it is with the OnePlus but uh, it just wasn't able to store apps in its memory as well as the Note 5 Pro uh, so a lot of times when I would reopen an app on the OnePlus 6, it would reload the app as opposed to uh, starting from where I last left. It is about 1pm right now and the phone is at about 82%. It took Dash Charge only 50 minutes to get it up from 10% to 82%. Absolutely amazing stuff. Haven't seen anything like it before. But I did also go ahead and switch to gestures today. I haven't used the iPhone 10 or anything like that before, so I'm still kind of new to it. Although I'm kind of digging it, it's fun and kind of intuitive. And it does also make the phone look extremely clean, so I'm digging the look of that. But right now, I am about to head out, catch up with some friends, hit the bowling alley maybe. So uh, this should also be a really good test for the camera as well as the battery. So we'll talk once I am back. Okay guys, I am back home after spending about 5 hours outside with friends, having fun. Uh, so right now the battery is at 33%, I remember I left with about 67%. Uh, so I didn't use the phone all that much, a couple of phone calls, few snaps here and there and of course uh, social media. Uh, but the phone was always on 4G so I guess that's the reason it drained, uh, the battery drained that the amount that it drained. Okay, so I just put the phone aside for a bit and took it back again in my hand and I noticed that the phone has gotten slightly warm. It's not overheating warm or like, not like super duper warm, but it's just warm enough for me to feel that it has gotten warm. Uh, which is weird because the last half intensive task I did was shoot a video which is like almost 30 minutes ago. And to be honest, I don't even know if like shooting video is considered intensive for a phone of this caliber but this is extremely weird because I haven't used the phone in like 20-30 minutes and it's just gotten warm for no reason. So it's almost 10 p.m. the phone is at 3% battery. Remember we started off the day with 48, charged it up to 82 by noon and now again it's down to 3% so pretty average battery life there. Uh, I'm gonna plug the phone in again and let it charge for a little bit now. We'll do a bit more work and call it a night. It is a new day. Day 3 with the OnePlus 6 in fact. Uh, just got up to 91% battery last night. I uh, charged it up to 96 so good standby time there and uh, let's see how the day goes and hopefully I can make uh, some more useful observations today. Okay guys, I've been using the phone a bit casually today and while doing so I discovered this extremely weird bug in the YouTube app. So let's say I'm watching a YouTube video and now for whatever reason I need to use the Google Assistant uh, and I need to use it from within the app itself. So I say the two magical words that brings up Assistant. I ask my question, get the answer and close the Assistant. Now I wanna move on and continue watching my YouTube video. So as I press play on the YouTube video, uh, the video just goes black. I can still hear the audio, I can hear what the YouTube video has to offer in terms of audio, but the video or the visual side of it just go black. Uh, I tried replicating this multiple times, the result uh, was always the same. I tried replicating this on my Redmi Note 5 Pro, uh, the result was not the same. Uh, the video would just play back the way it should, so I don't know what is wrong with the OnePlus, I don't know why it's happening. But as of recording this, I am on the latest version of Oxygen OS, which happens to be 5.1.5 and I'm pretty sure uh, they'll probably fix this in a near future update. It's not that big a deal, but it's a pretty interesting bug or uh, glitch, weird bug, whatever it is. Uh, one that I've never uh, witnessed before, so I thought I should document it. Day 4 with the OnePlus 6. Uh, last night I got around 5 hours 30 minutes to almost 6 hours screen on time and I actually ended up charging the phone by 8pm which isn't uh, anything to write home about obviously. With my Note 5 Pro I know for sure that I would end up charging only the next day or in the worst case scenario uh, late night and I would always almost get 8 hours plus screen on time. 
Uh, but anyway, uh, today I want to go ahead and compare all the camera samples that have been taken from these uh, two phones. So here goes a quick impromptu camera comparison between the Note 5 Pro and the OnePlus 6. In well-lit conditions, the Note 5 Pro does a job almost as good as the OnePlus 6. Straight out of camera, the images are a bit underexposed. That's the way the Note 5 Pro has been doing it since day one, whereas the OnePlus 6 almost always renders a well-exposed image. Color reproduction and sharpness are a tiny bit better on the OnePlus 6, and dynamic range is almost equally good on both devices. But as the light starts to go down, so does the quality of the images on both phones. But of them both, the OnePlus 6 is definitely the better one at low light. I guess it's the f1.7 aperture at play versus the f2.2 on the Note 5 Pro. Not only that, the OnePlus also tends to bump up the ISO a bit more than the Note 5 Pro, so the result is a brighter image. The Note 5 Pro keeps a low ISO but at the same time it retains a rather slow shutter speed so oftentimes you'll end up with a blurry image on the Note 5 Pro which can often be frustrating to the average Joe. So the OnePlus 6 is definitely the overall better shooter with the rear camera but that is not to say the Note 5 Pro is bad at all. When it comes to selfies though, I do prefer the Redmi Note 5 Pro. Okay guys, today is the day I will be bidding adieu to the OnePlus 6. So in a nutshell, here's what I think of the device with respect to my Note 5 Pro. For starters, the OnePlus 6 is the subjectively better looking device. It is also the faster performing one and is probably also better with gaming, although I haven't fully tested that. In terms of RAM management, surprisingly, as you guys saw, the Note 5 Pro is actually better, which is again extremely surprising. The software on the OnePlus is super clean, so I will again give the software to OnePlus. Although MIUI has some really really nice uh, tricks up its sleeve that I did miss uh, during my usage with the OnePlus 6. So it's kind of a tie there or you could just say the OnePlus is better, I mean it's kind of debatable. The display on the OnePlus is nice, uh, it is AMOLED so you get all the benefits that come with being an AMOLED display. Uh, but to be honest, I actually prefer the colors on the Note 5 Pro uh, over the OnePlus 6 in terms of the display, straight out of the box. The camera on the OnePlus 6 is the kind of camera that you can almost always point at anything and expect to get a good image without putting in much effort. The Note 5 Pro on the other hand, uh, straight out of the box, it isn't as good as the OnePlus 6. But if you put in the work, if you put in the effort, I actually think the Note 5 Pro can come quite close to the camera on the OnePlus 6. But I will admit, I really envy the slow motion options on the OnePlus 6. I also envy the fact that uh, the OnePlus 6 is 4K. I really wish MI would add it to the Note 5 Pro. It's honestly high time. And finally, portrait mode, in my opinion, is almost equally good on both cameras. Speaking of the battery, 5 to 6 hours screen on times on the OnePlus 6 are quite attainable. On the Note 5 Pro, you can expect upwards of 8. And I actually prefer the Note 5 Pro in terms of battery, even though it may take longer to charge. And a lot of you guys also seem to prefer that combination. In terms of some other features, the OnePlus 6 gets the alert slider, which a lot of people really, really like. I can kind of live without it, it's not a huge deal to me. Uh, the Note 5 Pro on the other hand gets the IR Blaster, which in my opinion is a bit more useful. I use it a lot in class. Uh, and of course, both these phones have headphone jacks. So to sum it up, I feel like both these phones are like jack of all trades, master of none or one in their own price ranges. Neither of these devices will disappoint you. If you've got the OnePlus 6, stick with it. It's a good phone, but as for me, I just don't think the extra amount is worth it. There, I said it. Oh, and just for the record, I did get used to the notch on the OnePlus 6. People really need to stop complaining. So, uh, yeah, it's been Suraj. Thanks so much for watching. Take it easy and stay devoted.